Welcome to Football Night in Chicago, powered by Points Bet. I am David Hoff from 6 7 The Score, the Mullen Haw Show, joined by Josh Schrock, the Bears Insider for NBC Sports Chicago. Big Ant Heron from The Score, the Big Ten Network, and several other outlets. Uh, <laughs> my teammate over at The Score, and Luis Medina from Bleacher Nation. Thanks for being here, guys. Today, the big day. Kevin Warren, as we saw, talking big, talking bold. This was an impressive performance at House Hall, if you want to call it that. New Bears president gets an opportunity to articulate what his vision is. You heard him say Super Bowl. I think he said it seven times. He, talk, he talked in terms of championships. The Bears grew up today. I think they, they welcomed Kevin Warren. And I think you can safely say this with no disrespect to anybody else they've ever hired. He's the most qualified guy who has ever taken a job at Hallis Hall, just based on his credentials and based on the way the Bears typically do things. Is that overstating it? You were there, Josh. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I think got done with it, and you could just feel energy, right? Different energy. He felt things were going to be different. This is a guy who's meticulous. He's detail-oriented. He has a vision. And I thought it was really important that he made sure to note he wanted this job at this time. He knows how important this part, this part of this franchise is. Uh, his role in it, the stadium going forward, the draft picks, salary cap, Ryan Poles, all that. Man, he just, he jumped off the page, right? He owned today. Uh, the work begins a little later, but today you could tell why they hired Kevin Warren. Easy to win the press conference, but I think right. it felt different today, Big Ant. And getting, you know, the opportunity like I've had where I covered him when he first became Big Ten commissioner for a variety of Big Ten outlets. And, you know, today you, you could see him. It, it did feel like he was more back in his element today than when he first took over as Big Ten commissioner. The, not only the COVID aspect of the time he initially took the gig, but just, you know, he wasn't in the collegiate sports landscape prior to that. You could tell there were a lot of things that felt more, more rote, more scripted when he, you know, his first time addressing the nation, addressing the media as Big Ten commissioner. And today he just he seemed very in his element, even though it was day one as Bears president, as Bears CEO. And it, it just felt like everything that came out of his mouth to me, Luis, was was a guy who knew exactly where he was. He had his feet planted firmly and, and was very confident in the direction he was going to lead the Bears. Kevin Warren eased a lot of my fears with his press conference today. He sounded like an adult. <laughs> and for me as a Bears fan, that's so important because we've seen guys lose press conferences over the years. <laughs> and when Ted Phillips was up there over the years, you never got that confidence of this guy is leading us to greatness. It's just a first impression, but first impression, he landed today. Kevin Warren landed it today. We wondered what his role would be in football matters. It's always the football guy. He doesn't need to be messing. If he's not a football guy, he's got to talk to the football guy, but it's keep the separation of church and state at Hallis Hall. But Kevin Warren left no doubt. He will be the guy who knows how to build a champion at Hallis Hall. I'm, I'm a big believer in, in challenges, and uh, I wouldn't want it if it were easy. If all the elements were in place, uh, it wouldn't have been as, as attractive. But the, the main thing is the challenge. And I believe in every organization, there are certain inflection points. And I think the Chicago Bears are at that point from a positive standpoint. Uh, we have so many positive things. I never look at the negatives. There's no such thing as a negative situation. It's just opportunities. And I think when you have starts with the ownership, when you have the McCaskey family the way they operate their lives and the way they operate in the re respected nature and to tie this back to be one of the founding franchises. That's what you start with. And then you think about the fans and the alumni and the players and the coaches and the, you know, creative uh, scouting department, what coach and Ryan bring to the table and, and the success that they've had and a young team and draft picks and free agency and all of those different things. Uh, so that's what intrigues me. I, I, I always want to be, uh, have something where when you get out of the bed in the morning that you say there's there there is too much to do coach Dick Vermeil says something to me during our quest in St. Louis for a Super Bowl our first year we were five and eleven second year we we're four and twelve last year sixteen and three our Super Bowl year two things he said he said a lot of things but really resonate with me the second year he said to me he said once people in the building realize that not if but when we win the Super Bowl that all of our rings are going to look the same that they'll put their egos to the side. And it was interesting at the ring ceremony, it was right. My Super Bowl ring looked just like Kurt Warner's. It looks like just like Marshall Fox, Orlando Pace, and Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce. It looked the same. And so that's one thing. The other thing that he said is you got to recognize that when you build a house, you build the basement first. 
So although you drive by a house and you don't see any progress upon land, that doesn't mean the building is not going on. And so I think with that and that common goal that, that, that Matt and Ryan and George and everyone in this organization will have, it will be a very uh, healthy environment. We won't agree on everything, uh, but we'll work together because we have a common goal of making sure that we bring championships to this franchise. Love the analogies. Love the name dropping. <laughs> Dick Vermeil, he dropped a few others. Right, big yeah. So, Anthony Heron, the change in structure for the Bears, the general manager will report to Kevin Warren. That's a shift in hierarchy. Significant or important or overstated? Because of who Kevin Warren is, I do think it's, it's significant, but it makes a lot of sense. You know, it was one thing that when, when we saw the shift where George McCaskey was going to be the one who the general manager was reporting directly to, and that didn't necessarily feel like it was going to lead to as much success as folks might hope for either because George McCaskey doesn't mind saying that he's not a football guy. And so you're wondering who the football guys answer to. And, you know, Kevin Warren isn't a guy who's going to get on the grease board and drop coverages or, you know, he, he's not one who I think will, will mingle too much in the day-to-day -day football aspects of things, but he's accustomed to football people answering to him. He has done that for a variety of sports. He's certainly done that in the National Football League. And so I think this structurally makes sense where now he can have a similar capacity to what he had and in let's Minnesota. And let's face it, doesn't a 37-year-old general manager need a sounding board with Kevin Warren's experience? Absolutely, and that's what Ryan Poles mentioned today when asked about it. He said, I'm very excited about having someone who knows the Big Ten. I know he knows college athletes. He's been around football. I can ask him about player X or player Y or what he's heard about so-and-so. So it's not so much answering to. They see it as a collaboration. Now, if they butt heads eventually, then we'll see if it's truly collaboration. But I asked Kevin Warren about that, and he said, look, as long as we all have that same goal, he brought up Kurt Warner, another name drop, <laughs> it's all going to go fine. Well, if they win, nobody will care right. who gets the credit or how much he intervenes as long as they win. Just win, baby. That's what Al Davis said. Just win. I loved what I heard um, about the structure because as we know about the Bears, this is a franchise that hasn't had much structure over the years, especially at the top. So now we have a clear chain of command with this team, and it's Kevin Warren, it's Chairman George McCaskey, President Kevin Warren, GM Ryan Poles. It's, it's nice to see. It's, it's comforting. The, the Bears are acting like a big league franchise for a change. Yeah, they grew up today, and they have a franchise quarterback to go with their new franchise president. And, hey, they know each other. Going back to three years ago, you'll remember this, during the <laughs> pandemic, and Kevin Warren postponed, canceled the season. Justin Fields came back and led a, a player revolt. I think the word Kevin Warren's talked mm -hmm. about today. But that relationship is interesting, and I think it was fascinating to hear him describe it when he talked about it today. I'll say this. If I had been in the Big Ten at that time, um, I would have done the same thing. And what that told me about Justin is he's passionate. And if, if it, Now, my whole goal was trying to keep players safe. Uh, I appreciated him. Uh, to be able to take that leadership role. So I was ecstatic. I called him on draft day. I was ecstatic when he got drafted by the Bears because that's what you need from a leadership standpoint. But I have a, a strong personal relationship, you know, with him. He's talented. Uh, he's a leader. I love this passion. I would have been the same way of being able to do it. Interestingly enough, I've only been to one game in Minnesota since I left. In 2019, I was at, in Minnesota for some meetings, and it was the weekend that the Bears were playing. And so I actually went to the game and went into the to locker room to say hello to Justin and a lot of our Big Ten folks, Riley Reef and Trevor Simeon, and, and just to be able to go uh, to say hello. But I have the greatest amount of respect for him, you know, because I know he's going to do everything he possibly can with the talent that he has uh, to be a leader, and he wants to win championships. So I take it as a comment. Those are the people that I want because if someone was not upset about playing, then I really would, would be concerned. Because I know if I was in the Big Ten and someone did what I did, yeah, I would have led a revolt uh, to be able to play because that's how passionate I was, you know, to take advantage of it. So I think that's great. All right, Josh, two things about that stand out. Number one, he called Justin Fields on draft night. That's a relationship that he maintained, and I think that's pretty cool that he still had his number, that he gave him his number, and that he followed through with that relationship. The second thing is, were you in Minnesota? Who was in Minnesota? This guy was mingling around the locker room, and this story didn't leak that he was going to be involved here. How did that stay so quiet? 
Yeah, I think a few of us tweeted it out, okay. but I think he was in there uh, before the media was in there. All right. He just kind of snuck uh, into <laughs> snuck in to say hi. Don't don't throw it on no, the stage. Yeah, is that before he was named? Yeah, it was well before well, he well was before. named. Well before. And it was just when he was maybe flirting with the idea yeah. and you know mingling and yeah. re reacquainting himself. Yeah, right. How that relationship? Test, yeah. test the test the waters. Exactly. But I think the relationship with Justin Fields is intriguing because doesn't matter not really but I do think that the way that he framed it and he, he accentuated the pauses what does he like about Justin Fields winner leader tough all these kinds of things and he, he said if he were in Justin Fields position when he was a player he'd have let a revolt too I thought it was really telling about his leadership style and you know for anyone who's who's been around Kevin Warren who's covered him who knows folks who've covered him that is his leadership style he, he doesn't mind differences of opinion he doesn't mind being challenged and that you know obviously him being the team president is talking about his his quarterback now with the Bears there's not necessarily going to be a, a lot of challenge that has to happen from a QB to a team president but that being said I think the staff that'll work under Kevin Warren with the Bears they can take some information about that for their perspective because they haven't interacted with him yet. Luis, I asked Kevin Warren today how he does his job, the leadership, the brand of leadership he applies at Howell's Hall. How is that going to affect Sundays? What did you think of his answer, and what do you think of that? Like, how does a leader affect change on the football field? Well, everything, as we know, you know starts from the top. And if you have strong presidency, you're going to probably have strong you know, general manager. From there, what you'll do is you build the team, and, and you're going to build around Justin Fields. I think that was the thing that I took away most from this was he really was supportive of Justin Fields, supportive of, of what that revolt, like, like, that, <laughs> like that term, the revolt that was led, because he needs a leader. And if your quarterback isn't that dude, the rest of those guys follow. Also, he's going to meet with every employee at Howell's Hall. And in those conversations, you're going to get a sense of, he, he just has to come in and raise the standards. And you could just tell it today. Being in that room, I know that you haven't been around for a, for a long time, but I've been in that room before where you don't have the sense when you're walking out that something special just happened. When you left today, it was like, this is significant. This is different. This is change. I know you're hosting the show today, David, but there's no one on the panel with as much experience covering the Bears as you because from your perspective, I'm really curious how you view the structural shift with the Bears where you, you've, you've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with George McCaskey and, and what happened. I think it's always been overstated in mm. Chicago. I think it's always overstated the non-football guy can't, dis, can't inter collaborate with the football guy and Ted has to stay in this room while they're drafting and don't tell Ted what's going on because he's not a football guy. Look. Good leadership breeds success. And what you want is that wisdom, that experience. Kevin Warren comes here, again, as qualified as anybody who's ever done a job at Hallis Hall. So it's overstated that he needs to stay in his lane. Mm. The, you can merge. You can merge thoughts. You can merge philosophies. And you certainly can use his leadership and his wisdom when you're, when you're searching for coaches, when you want feedback on draft picks. I think what you want, if you're Ryan Poles, is not advice, but reassurance. What's well, better way to get reassurance than somebody who's been in the league as long as Kevin Warren has had, has been in the league and had the success that he's had? You nailed it. Sounding board. If you think about what a general manager's relationship with the president is, you need someone who you can go to and be like, hey, I need this, this, and this. And if you're Ryan Poles, having someone with Kevin Warren's experience who been been in the Big Ten, been in the NFL, it's a lot different than what Ted Phillips provided. All due respect to Ted, he wasn't a guy who had those connections dating back for a long time. He'd just been with the Bears for a long time. <laughs> That's the difference, is being with the Bears and being around the NFL. And I think that is what makes him a winner. But, Anthony, you've been in those rooms, too. What happens with the Bears sometimes in the past, frankly, is it gets clumsy yeah. in moments like this. Today, it was as smooth as possible. Also, it, it, there was an element of, it, I had a flashback when Lovey Smith took over in 2004, and he was the head coach of the Bears. He made it clear from day one, I want to beat the Packers. <laughs> he was very clear about his goal. Today, Kevin Warren made it very clear very early in that process, we want to win a Super Bowl. I was curious if we would use those words, Super Bowl. He talked about championships. This is not somebody who's approaching this job as like, I'm happy to be here. He wants <laughs> to have success during his reign. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit it on the head. What did he say? We can't be afraid to talk about wanting to win a championship. And it starts at the top. And I think just his energy and his his meticulousness, that that will filter down to everyone else, right? This guy's on his P's and Q's. He's demanding excellence. He's demanding the standard be raised. I better be on my P's and Q's <laughs> to make sure everything goes off without a hitch because we have big goals here now. And he made clear that his first number one goal, the main objective, is Arlington Heights. And after the break, we will take a look at what he had to say about the stadium project for the Chicago Bears.